I finally finished something that I started a year ago. It's my silly string tank. Sometimes you take on projects that are perhaps a little too ambitious. About a year ago, I did part one on this silly string tank. I still think it's a great idea having a tank that's based on 3D printed parts, a cheap kit from Banggood, and then a bit of Arduino code that's remote control and can shoot this stuff, silly string. Pretty harmless, but still pretty fun in terms of shooting something from a tank. Recently, I thought it was about time that I finished this thing off. I knew a few people have been waiting on it, so sorry that it took almost a year to get part two out, but it is in a workable state. So how about we start by looking at where I got to last time and then the parts that I've designed to make this one come to life. In part one of this project, I showed you how to assemble the tank chassis from Banggood, and then we covered all of the wiring for the complete project. After that, we got the transmitter bound and we ended the video with some Arduino code. The sum of all of this was a partially completed tank. The coating for the driving was finished, but all of the components were just resting on top and it couldn't fire the silly string. So what did we change for this video to get the thing complete and functional? It's mostly 3D printed parts and assembly, so we'll start with looking at how I designed the printed parts. I started by modeling by using vernier calipers to create an accurate model of the metal frame that formed the top of the tank chassis. I decided I want all of the electronics to be on the inside, so I did basic models of things like the Uno and the Matek. I also modelled up the battery, just a simple version to get the basic dimensions, and that gave me all of the details I needed to make this lower mount. As you can see, there's a bunch of holes here, and they line up with the various cutouts on the top. The battery is secured nicely there, but I still needed a way to access all of these things that was as convenient as possible. Therefore, I came up with this lower lid, you can see it hinges on one side and then it has a couple of screws that come into here and then they latch onto this hole so I have a quick release system, the whole lot swings open and I can access and alter the electronics very conveniently. The next thing I did was to model the can in the position where I wanted it to sit and then I either modeled or imported the two servos required to get the trigger on top of the can as well as the one to change the tilt. Little details like the horn were also important so I could get everything aligned. Once again, we have a tray piece, which bolts onto the tank chassis, then are modeled on two parts that snap onto the can. The top one also holding the servo, so a one-sided horn can push down and activate the nozzle. There was a tiny bit of effort to model up a nose, and then a brace which was required for it to function properly. All of the parts are oriented ready for printing, and most of them just need high infill for strength, but no support, but that's apart from two parts. The upper can holder needs support from the build platform only underneath this rim here. And you also need support from the build platform only to go underneath this nose, just to support the bolts for mounting right here. This part can have a much lower infill to save plastic as it's purely cosmetic. Now it's time for assembly and it would have been too tedious to watch me put in all of these bolts, so I'll keep it brief. We have a tray for the battery up the top and we need to place that and neatly wrap around the cabling as well as the charging port to suck it out of the way enough that it doesn't get caught but it's easy to access later on. Now the receiver for the RC is simply cable tied in and the switch I'm pretty happy with the mounting for that. No bolts required as you slide the plastic lower mount into place there's a slot for it and when everything is bolted up it shouldn't be able to move. The Matek BEC needs a couple of bolts to go onto its mounting boss and a couple of bolts also for the UNO underneath the motor driver shield. With all of this in place, you can attach the lower lid. As you can see on the right hand side here, it has two long M3 bolts that go through and that allows it to swivel and it should swivel quite freely. Down the other end, I have some large M5 bolts. Something with a nice big mushroom cap is good. And you'll see that it closes over, being careful to get the battery in the correct position. And it interfaces with the two holes in the metal frame of the tank chassis. As you're about to see, after it clips into place, it's actually really strong. In fact, I can pick up the whole weight of the tank by this and it doesn't come undone. But if we flex it outwards just a little bit, the bolts disengage and we can open it really easily. Take care to thread your two servos through to the other side because we're going to attach those next. Should also note that the upper mount has been bolted in from underneath using the holes that line up with the rear of the tank chassis. Now we're working on top and we're gonna take the smaller of the two servos 
and we're going to bolt it in place on the center of the upper mount facing the right hand wheel. Your servo should have come with two small self tapping screws and the boss for mounting these is designed for those to grab and hold the servo in place. As you can see the output of the servo goes towards the back of the tank. Next we're going to install the two can holders and it's very important that they're able to swivel up and down freely. We're relying on gravity so if you need to do a little bit of sanding to make sure it moves freely then do so before inserting any bolts. As you can see the holes are different sizes. The one in the can mount is actually 3mm and the other ones are purposely too big. We want the bolt to pass freely through the silver parts as seen here but thread inside the gold ones. That will be plenty secure. After this is in, we're going to take the opposing part, which is pretty much identical apart from the mounts for holding the servo. Once again, do a little bit of sanding if you need to, to make sure this one can swivel up and down freely. The larger of the two servos now slots in, and you can use a few M3 bolts coming down from the top to secure it in place. I found that one on each side was strong enough to secure it without it moving around. If you watch the servo that triggers the can, you can see that moving the left stick to either side, regardless whether it's up or down, will trigger the system. And this was one of the hardest parts to get working reliably. I originally wanted to use a small servo to activate the nozzle, but it just wasn't strong enough. I tried this geared plunger system, still not strong enough, and also this 3 to 1 geared version, which also still wasn't strong enough. Only the large high torque metal gear servo you see here was strong enough to get the job done. Now this is one of the most satisfying parts of the tank build and that is slotting in the can. It needs a bit of force and then it clips perfectly into place. Make sure that your servo arm is just above the top of the nozzle. If you need to undo the bolt and change the angle slightly before doing it back up. We'll now spin the tank around to the other side and flick on the power to get the small servo underneath to go to its default position. Now we can grab the horn and the idea is to put it on so it's barely touching the can. With this in place, you should be safe enough to put on a retaining bolt and then to turn on the transmitter and test it out. Let gravity pull it back down and then when you lift up the left stick back and forth, you should have just enough angle to get some good aiming on the tank. The last piece to go on is the nose. It's pretty much cosmetic, you can leave it at if you want, but if you're finding the center of gravity is off and the tank is tipping backwards, you can print it with higher end fill to move the weight forward and correct that. The little servo was too weak, but this one's almost too strong. You can see here that it actually pushes the can out of the holder, and to combat that, I have this brace piece. I used one, but if you're having trouble, you can print out more than one of these, and it's designed to slide over the top and stop the whole thing from coming undone. There'll still be some flex, but it should work just fine. One more thing I should note, that after assembling the tank, there was a lot of nuts and bolts left over, and that will see you through for the majority of this assembly. So I guess it's all together, so let's revisit the control scheme and see how it performs. The control scheme is pretty straightforward. The right hand stick is used for all of the tank movement. You can go up, down, left, right, it'll pivot on the spot, or if you use diagonals, it'll do combinations of those. It's fairly intuitive and easy to control. The left hand stick lifts the canister up and down to change your vertical aim and when I'm testing the trigger I like to do it inside a box to prevent mess and you can push it to the right or the left either side and it will function exactly the same way past a certain dead zone in the middle. Now this can is pretty much empty so let's head outdoors and test it properly. One thing to note is that this chassis is not exactly capable off-road especially now that the center of gravity is near the rear. In terms of being mobile and shooting silly string however, it's right on the mark. Because it's a tank and it can turn on the spot, it's quite agile at taking aim, rotating around and then shooting quickly. Probably the main downside is that the silly string doesn't last that long. I also don't think the aerosol can likes being on its side, so it kind of loses a bit of pressure after a little while and misfires. One thing that is real is the cleanup required afterwards. So if you're looking to avoid this significant downside, the better option might be to take your tank and simply do a runner. It doesn't quite work as well as I would like. It does technically function, but it could do with some more polishing. Now I'm not expecting many people to actually go out and follow my plans to make this thing, but if you think this would be a good project for you, down in the description you'll find links to everything you need to make one for yourself. I'm not sure how much more time I'm willing to invest in this, but if you think you have some good suggestions on how I can improve it, please leave them in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, 
happy, overly complicated, long-term projects. G'day, it's Michael again. If you liked the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.